sovereignty, your reign over our lives. We thank you for your abundant grace and your mercy towards us. Even now, we enter into your kingdom, O oh God, and we enter into your voice of praise. And we are thankful to you, and we bless your name. For it is you who have called us, and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pasture. Thank you, Father, for your amazing love. Because if it was not for your love and not but for your grace, where would we be without you? So, God, we're thankful to you. And we bless your holy name, God. We thank you that you're the king of all kings and that you are the Lord of our lives. Thank you for leading us in the green pastures, oh God. And we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as you restore our souls. Thank you for the refreshing that we get as we worship, as we praise your name, oh God. You take us to another place in life. You take us to another place in thought as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. So we ask even now, God, as we sanctify this moment, we consecrate it for you. God, the business of this world, the things that we go through, God, we put them all to the side, God, and we concentrate on you and we worship you spirit and in truth so that you glorified in our lives oh God that, that you change what we cannot change for ourselves so we bless you God we look even now to the hills on which come up our help knowing that our help comes from you we thank you oh Father for your spirit of comfort upon those who are mourning right now we pray that you lift them up God that you allow their minds to be stayed on you so that they will stay in perfect peace this we ask that you do more, and not only what we ask, but the more than we can imagine or think, according to the power of God that's working in us. God, we don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we trust you every day, knowing that it is you who knows what's best for our lives. So we stand on your promises, and your word says that everything, all things will work together for good for those who love you are the called according to your purpose. So God, be glorified in us and through us, Lord God. And may we be surrendered like never before to the will and purpose that you have for our lives, that we will see the destiny on the horizon that you have made a way out of no way. So God, be glorified in us and through us, God, as we thank you for all that you've done and what you will continue to do through our lives. We yield ourselves as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto you, that we may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God for our lives. So we trust you, God, and we know you know what's best for our lives. And this we submit to you, God, in the name of the precious Son, Jesus Christ, and the church of God says, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. This is a special time worship as every time is a special time of worship but whenever we are gathered or working together in harmony of worship is a great time of expectancy to see what God's going to do. Uh, each day I come with expectancy and hope of what God will do in our lives and through our lives and he never disappoints. I don't know about you but the scripture says hope disappoints not. So we're not disappointed in anything God wants to do in and through our lives. Uh, so today we thank you for joining in and you may be in your living room, in your bedroom, uh, in the office, wherever you are joining us live. And we thank God for just allowing your heart to be knit with our hearts as we worship God together, as we live for him, as we present ourselves a living sacrifice. So even now, uh, if you have your Bibles, and you should have your Bible, we're here to get into the word of God and to exhort you and to just uh, it, it, it inspire you to do all that God desires for you to do in, in your life. So as we look at the Word of God together this morning, I mean, Romans chapter 12, uh, it's one of the richest uh, verses or one of the richest chapters in the whole entire Bible. There's so much to glean from in this chapter. But we're just going to look at a few verses as I speak to you this morning about uh, as our series of I'm talking about uh, caring for one another in the united church because God wants to live in our unity more than anything else God wants to be glorified in our unity amen 
Come on, when we become one, he says, when we are one and have love one for another, then the world will know we are his disciples. Come on, they don't know about how big the church is or how big the cross is on the church or how many people come to your church. No, God knows who we are and the world will know who we are when we have love one for another. That's what the word of God says because there has to be a mark. There has to be a sign. There has to be something that indicates or, or, or gives notice to the world that we are his. And God says when we love one for another. So that's why I've been preaching here the last couple of weeks on the unity of the church because during this time and in our uh, time of being apart and not worshiping together, sometimes we seem to stray. We seem to go our own way and be in our own place. And it becomes harder and harder to identify one with another in unity because we don't see each other as we should. But God is bringing that to pass, and sooner or later we will be worshiping together. But until then, we cannot lose our momentum. We cannot lose the mandate that God has in his word that we have love one for another. And love is more than just a word. It's more than just what we say, because people are good to say, I love you, but show me you love me. Amen? Come on. God demonstrated his love towards us, and he gave us his son, his only begotten son. How did he show us? How did he demonstrate it? The death of the cross. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me because God knew that that's the way to unify the church. So we are now uh, expected to live this mandate out as the church. Amen. That means we need to know in part. We need to understand in part. But when Jesus comes, we, he going to make sure everything is well known to everyone. So it's up to us now to make sure we are living out this amazing life that God has called us to. And to do that, there's certain things we will have to do. And as I, I title this message today, the title will be, It Depends on You. Come on, we can't keep worrying about what everybody else is doing and what they're not doing and how they're doing it and who's saying what and who's not saying what and who is and who's not. What about you? See, it's easy to point our fingers, but every time we point our fingers, there's a bunch of fingers pointing back at us. That's just how it works. Because the reality is if I can do my part and understand where I am, then I don't have to worry about the elements or what's around me to make sure I'm fulfilling what God wants me to do. Come on, it's personal accountability. And sometimes there's not being on everybody's list to make sure I'm doing my part or living as God wants me to do. It's easy to figure out what everybody else is not doing. Come on, you know how it is when we're hearing a sermon. You want everybody to know, hey, I, I, I heard a sermon, it's for you. Or I heard a word, it's for you. And we always got a word for everybody else, but what about the word for me? Well, I need personal accountability. I need to know that I'm living the way God wants me to live and I'm doing what God wants me to do. I can't examine or judge my life on what everybody else says is I should be doing or what I should not do or what I am doing. I need to know I'm doing what God has said for me to do. Come on, we cannot be exhausted worrying about everybody else and trying to control everybody else's actions. We'll never get there. The best way to get there is to make sure I've done all I can do. And when I've done all I can do, I just keep on standing. Come on, I can't, I can't worry about who's not going to do it, who won't do it, and who won't go, and who doesn't want to exist there, and who wants to do their own thing. We, we, we'll worry ourselves sick. We'll make ourselves ragged trying to figure out why somebody's not doing what you think they should be doing. Come on, i just got to be accountable for me. And what I should be doing. Because when I do my part, then I can best assure God will do his part in me. Come on, everything will work together for my good. That's the promise. That's the word we stand on. It's not this hope or, or exaggeration of what we think will happen. God promises us that it will happen. And his promises are yes and they are amen. If he promised it, he said it, he will do it. Come on, God is not slack concerning his promises. He will bring it to pass. It is our challenge as believers. It's our challenge as children of the Most High God to live as God has called us to live. Not how we want to live, not what we want to do, but how God has given us the mandate how to live. 
Come on, it is a disciple. We are called out. And disciples are disciplined learners. They are people who are working and living their lives to please the Heavenly Father. Come on, to live in obedience, to walk in a oneness that God has called us to. And that begins by every day living by the Word of God and making sure we're examining our own lives to make sure we are still in the faith. Amen? Come on, Romans chapter 12. Just want to look at a few scriptures with you. If you can look at verse 9 with me. Verse 9. Verse 9. Come on. I want to talk to you a few minutes about it depends on you. Come on. I, I, I know you worry about everybody else, but it really depends on you. Come on. Being safe and living in this environment, making sure we're doing the things we do. Come on. It depends on you. Come on, some people still, they, they go in this store, they're doing their thing, and they're not even taking regard to the people around them, that, that, the, the, the lives around them. It might not be affecting you, and you may feel invincible, but what about somebody else? What about thinking about somebody other than yourself when you're doing this? It's not just so that they can say you've complied with the rule. Notice that we understand that this is just not about me. Amen? Come on, Romans chapter 12, God helps us to live and walk as a Christian should walk. And he, and he starts out the verse and he says, let love be without hypocrisy. Come on, one of the biggest things against the church and people in the church is they think they, they call them hypocrites. Why? Because they say one thing and they do another. Come on, if I'm walking in God is love and, and, and I'm walking as a Christian and I'm supposed to be a disciple of the Most High God, then love needs to be a part of me. It can't be hypocritical. I love for those who I love, and I don't like who I don't like. Come on, that's hypocritical love. And the first thing he says here is, don't let your love be hypocritical. Come on. He said, just hate what is evil, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate one to another. Come on. With brotherly love. Come on, God's called us to that. Of course, there's no airs about it. It's because he's been gracious to us and loving to us. Then guess what we should do? Do it to someone else. Come on, he says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor. Listen to this. Giving preference to one another. Come on, that is my way or my will or do it my way. But I'm giving preference to one another so that we can walk in this amazing thing called unity. Come on, if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. If you have close friends, you know what I'm talking about. If, if you walk in a working in a work environment with people who, who are, you've been called to work alongside for this season of your life, you know what I'm talking about. Come on, it's about giving preference to one another. Come on, no, you might not want to watch a movie tonight. No, you may not want to go do something, but because you're my loving wife, I'm going to do it with you because I prefer you over myself. Oh, it's, it's, it's talking about laying down not, it's not my will, but your will be done. Oh, that's what God did for us. It wasn't about his purpose, it was about what he was doing for us. And that's what the scripture says, it says, in honor. Come on, how do you honor people? You prefer them over yourself. Doesn't make them greater than you, doesn't make them better than you, doesn't make them more than you. It just makes you a one who lives by the word of God. Honoring them, preferring them over yourself. Come on, I'd rather eat pizza tonight, but you want Chinese, we gonna eat Chinese. Come on, I might want an Italian sub steak and cheese with all the trappings, but you may want a salad. When you go ahead and eat your salad, I'll watch you. <laughs> no, but it doesn't matter because I want to prefer you over myself. Come on, so that we are walking in this brotherly love, kindly affectionate. One to another. People know when you view about you. They know when you're all about yourself and nobody else. They know it. They just deal with you. They just put up with you. But it's not godly. See, what is godly is when we prefer one another. That means it doesn't always become about me and my will, but it becomes about God and God's will for us. Not me, but for us. Come on, look at what he says. He says, not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Listen to this. Rejoicing in hope. That's what we live for, the hope of our salvation. Come on. Patient in tribulation. We all go through, but patient in tribulation. Continually steadfast in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints. That's what we've been called to this. This is not optional. This is what God's man is in the word of God. 
Oh, we skip around and bounce around the scriptures that fit me and feel good. But this is the word. He says, we distribute into the needs of the saints, give into hospitality. Come on, look, he said, he says, bless those who persecute you. You know they're not talking right to you. You talk right to them. And do not curse them. And he says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. And do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. And do not be wise in your own eyes or in your own opinion, but be wise in God. Come on, verse 17 says, and repay no evil or no one evil for evil. Well, you know how it is. They did something to you, you, you want to withhold or do something to them. And he says, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And here's the verse, if it is possible. Come on, just say that to yourself. Is it possible? Because the word of God says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you. Oh, it's not about uh, everybody else doing their part. Is everybody else lining up or saying right things? But if it's possible, as much as it depends on you. See, that's what God said. He said, can I depend on you? Can I count on you? See, see, the reality is everybody wants somebody they can count on, that they can depend on, that they can rely upon. And as much as God is, is able to be depended upon and relied upon, sometimes we need tangible evidence that people will do the things that God has called them to do and not just what they want to do. So as much as it depends on me, come on, live peaceably with everybody. If it depends on me. Come on, God, listen, church. God is speaking or speaking to us to the development of our lives in this walk of life. He doesn't just give us the scripture so that we can say it and know that we know it, but that we would live it. Come on, God wants us to live by this word, not just know it. We can know it, and that's good. Because we need to have the word in our hearts so that we don't sin against God. But it's the eye development of life that God uses this word. Well, how do I act with Krishna? How do I live in this kingdom? How do I treat people? How, I mean, is it all right for me to cut somebody out? Is it all right for me to be mad at people and contentious with people? Is that all right? Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's in the word of God. But yet we still develop these life part, these patterns of life that are so contradictory to what the word says. And all I'm saying is God has given us this word so that we can line our lives up as much as it depends on us, line our lives up with the scriptures so that we can live peaceably with everybody, with all men, with every person that comes in. If it's a problem, the problem's not with me. If it depends on me, it's not going to be with me. Come on, we got to make sure that we are able to have that heart and that mindset so that God can depend on us. Come on, he challenges us as a people to be unified, not only in word. Because some people got good talk, but when the fire get hot, they got good walk. Come on, we got to make sure we got good talk, but we also have a good walk. That I understand what the word says, and I want to walk it out for my life. Come on, it's in word and in deed. Come on, we say we have faith, but how is our faith demonstrated? Come on, James says, if you have faith, then you'll have works. That your works will be demonstrated by your faith. I'm doing this because I believe God. I'm allowing this to go down because I believe God. So my faith is aligned with my actions. How do we demonstrate it? See, let me tell you this, church. Unfortunately, we don't give the effort to detail when it comes to kingdom living. Come on, I know we're in this world. But we, we're not called of the world. Just because the world is doing it, and we know it's worldly thinking and worldly mentality happening, don't let it be ours. Oh, we gotta give effort to detail. It might be just a little thing that's got me a little bit off. It might be something that just hurt me or messed me up a little bit that's got me a little bit off. So I, I need to be start paying more attention to the details of my life and what's going around me so that I'm not stuck in this world. 
Come on, there's no way to come back. If you live in a world that you uh, lived, allowed your life to adjust to the world system to stay out living in the kingdom. They're contradictory. They, they don't exist together. Come on. The, the scripture says that if united we stand, but divided we are torn apart. So we have to be united in our thinking and our living in order to live as a kingdom person. Come on. The, the world says quit. The world says get yours. Come on. The, the word says live for yourself. Come on. That's what the world says. And that's totally against what God uh, wants for our, his church. It's totally against it. Come on, the enemy wants us to fuel our lives on self. Come on, on my need, on my wants, my desires. He wants us to fuel ourselves on that and be acquainted with just us and doing what we want to do. See, see, but, but, but God doesn't want us to do that. Come on, we cannot be a people who always find their fault and place and blame. It's because of them, it's because of this. Come on, if we're not careful, we'll get trapped in that thinking, in that mindset, and every part of our lives is we're trying to figure out who to blame, we're trying to figure out whose fault is it. Come on, we, we cannot live like that. See, we become our own worst enemy instead of our minds being stayed on him. See, our focus of kingdom living becomes messed up. Because our, man, our mind is everywhere and on everything. Come on, we, we cannot live that. Day. We, 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 must, we must rely on him and keep our minds stayed on him and not just our circumstances. Come on, we're going to live with circumstances as long as we live. As long as we're in this flesh. There's going to be circumstances. Come on, it might be your head not growing like it should. Might be like you can't run like you used to. You can't do some of the things you used to do. You did not accomplish some of the things you wanted to do in the natural. But it can't give us a different kingdom mindset. We still live for God. Come on. We, we, we become so stressed out over people and things we can't control. And things that's happening in our life that we have no control of. And, and they lose, we lose our focus on kingdom living. So, so, so many people are living with offenses and unforgiveness in their life. They can't focus on kingdom living. They, they're just focusing on surviving and making sure they don't get hurt the same way they got hurt before. And God knows that it's vulnerable living as he wants us to live. But he gives us the strength and the endurance to live past it and to live through it. Come on, so that, that unforgiveness and, and things like that in our life and offenses cannot destroy us. Come on, this, this, the, the Bible is, 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 is telling us that Jesus was sent to us to heal the broken heart. Who's got hurt? Maybe you have it. But so many people have been hurt, but God sent his son to heal the broken heart. That means where I've been hurt before and hurt in the past, that God's healing my heart so that I can be still useful in serving in the kingdom. Oh, we, we have what you call spiritual scars. Now, it, it, it might, you might not be able to see it in my life, but if you see my heart, my heart's been scarred. And so many people are living with these spiritual scars, and God says, I've healed, I've sent my son to heal the broken heart. So I might have been hurt and things didn't go the way I think, but God's healing my heart. He's helping me get over it. He's helping me get through it. And as God continues to do that in our lives, and guess what? We've been called to do the same thing. Come on, to be a breach, to be, be a stand in the middle, to stand in the gap for others. So that those who have been hurt, and those who have been wounded, and they got spiritual scars, you can't see them. But, but they need you to be that, that bridge. They need you to be that stand in the middle to help heal what's been hurt. And God wants to do that in and through our lives so that we're not walking around with these spiritual scars. Come on, he, he come to heal the broken heart. See, the worst place to ever find yourself is living with a mask on. Come on, we, we cannot live with disguise. Come on, I'm not talking about the mask we're wearing right now so people are not breathing things and, and germs are getting in the air so frequently. I'm talking about the mask that covers you so that no one can see who I really am or what I'm really going through. 
Well, that's the worst place to find myself that I got to wear a mask. And that I can't be who I am in front of you because who, what you may do to me or what you've done to me. Well, people wearing masks. And God said, that's the worst place to find ourselves because then we're not in liberty. We're in bondage, maybe to ourselves, but we're still in bondage. So, so we don't want to open up wounds and people don't want to be hurt. I understand that. But we've got to get to a place where we're free enough in God because it takes free people to free people. You cannot be in bondage. You can't be hiding behind a mask. Well, I do a little drinking or I do a little smoking or I do a little bit of this or that or that. And I don't want you to know, so I wear my mask. And as long as you wear your mask, you'll never be who you should be and what God has called you to be. And that's to live in this kingdom. On these wounds of offenses, these wounds of tribulation in our life, it happens to everybody. Nobody's exempt from something happening in their life. Nobody. We, we want to think we're invincible or we're untouchable. But sometimes God interrupts our life. What he said about Job, he was a just and upright man and nobody was like him. But yet the enemy still was allowed to touch his life. Well, God knows what's best for us. And, and many times it, it tests the genuineness of our faith. Come on, it's not what happens to us, it's how we deal with what has happened to us. Come on, remember what I said, it depends on you. Come on, are you a victim or are you a victor? Come on, sometimes it's just a matter of that. Am I going to let this kill me or am I going to stand against it? Is this driving me down or am I going to get up? Come on, am I a victim of everything and everyone? Or am I victorious because Jesus has given me the victory? Come on, we got to make that decision. Come on. The, the Gospel of John says this in verse 16, chapter 16, verse 33. I want you to write that down. This is an important text of scripture that goes along with this lesson today. He, he says this. He says, in this world, you will have tribulation. Sometimes we skip these parts when God is so precise in what he's saying. He says, you will have it. Stuff happens. And things break out in our lives. This pandemic is another hurdle in our life that we're dealing with. But tribulation happens. But look what the scripture says. He said, but be of good cheer. Come on, how can I be happy with stuff breaking down around me? How can I be happy when people are mistreating me? How can I be happy when things are not working the way I think they should work? Because the word says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. He said, you will have it. See, that's what I'm saying. It's not what, what happens to us. It's how we deal with it. Come on, it depends on you. How you want to deal with this? When it didn't work out the way you think, or they did something you didn't approve of, or they're so ungodly, I don't know how to deal with them. The same way God dealt with you. When he forgave you, when you was wretched, when you was so trifling out in the world, but he forgave you. Then how much more do we got to forgive someone else? I don't want you to stay there. I don't want you to keep living like that. But I forgive you. Let's move on. Because we need to serve this kingdom together. We can't, I can't do it by myself. But as much as it depends on me, I forgive you. Come on, we're going to walk through this. We're going to make this happen for our lives together. Come on, we, we got to understand that. And, and John 16 says this. He said, he said, he has overcome the world. So be a good chair. Come on, everything that happened to him, every, every transgression against him, everything that against him, he still overcame it. And God has called us to be overcomers. So, so, so what could we could not do for ourselves? God has done for us. Listen, church, it is the believer's walk in victory to be able to do these things and live as God has just said in his word. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the walk of victory. So that we're not always defeated. Or we're not judged by the things we've judged. But that we're free to live and serve in this kingdom, having a mind one for another. Come on, listen to this. When, when we have allowed Jesus to be Lord of our life, come on, not just our Savior, because we're good at that. Save me from hell. Save me from the pit. Save me from damnation. But what about him being your Lord? See, Jesus wants to be not only your Savior, he's done that work. 
That work's already been done for our lives, but he also wants to be your Lord. Come on, the scripture says, why call him Lord, Lord, and do not the things he said? That's because this word, it, it tests our lives. It challenges us to live it differently, to live circumspectly, understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's the call. And many times we don't know it on our own. We learn it day by day. We learn it step by step. But once I got it, I want to keep it so that I can stay living for God. Oh, I can't be in the same place I started. I got to start growing by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every day I get better at this. Every day I will get closer to Him. So that I can live this kingdom life and I can live and hear the words, well done, that good and faithful servant. Well, let's get this word in our heart. See, it is the supernatural part of living for God that changes our way of living with others. I mean, people are existing all over the place, but they ain't living for God. Trust me. They everywhere. They're existing everywhere in your life, and they look like they're alive and healthy, but they're not living for God. Come on, living for God is supernatural. It's a game changer. You don't see the same. You don't hear the same. And you certainly don't believe the same. Come on, that's why our actions should not be the same. Come on, look, look it's... it's God wants us to overcome evil with good. Come on. It's how we don't lose our zeal and we don't grow weary and well-doing. Come on, because whatever we reap, that's what we sow. And God says, don't, don't be weary in that. Because in due season, you will reap if you do not lose heart. And the scripture goes on in Galatians, it says, and to do good to those, especially that are in the house of the Lord. Your brothers and your sisters. Come on. It is God's will. We, we do a lot of things and we try to fix it up to, so it feels good or look good, but the reality is until it is uh, uh, what God has said in our lives, then it really is only our opinion. It's only our desire or what we think, our own reasoning. But I want to live out my own reasons. I done messed up too much. I done went back too far. But when I let my thoughts be lined up with the word of God, then guess what? It works for my good. Well, that's all God wants, for, to work for our good. Well, one more scripture, write it down, and we're about to close. Matthew 6, verse 33. It says, God demonstrated, or God commands us to seek his kingdom first. Well, that's all, that's all he said. Matthew 6, 33 is a powerful verse. What is he talking about? He's talking about the priorities of our life. Come on, when you get up in the morning, what's on your mind? When you go to bed at night, what's on your mind? And in the middle of all that, what's on your mind? Come on, are, are we seeking the kingdom first? Is our priority, priorities really lined up right? Come on, are we really, are, are we really lining our priorities up right? Come on, you hear people all the time so, so talking about you're so, so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. I'll take it. Well, I want to keep my mind on the things above and not just on the things that are beneath. Come on. He says, see ye first the kingdom. See, the sad part is that so many other things become a priority in our life. And the kingdom's not first. That's why we're lacking. That's why things are not measuring up. That's why we're still chasing certain things in our life. Because we didn't allow our priorities right. Well, I'm not talking about how many ministries you serve in. I'm not talking about your religious aspects. I'm just talking about the spiritual aspect that we love God and we're living by his word. And we're seeking the kingdom first in my actions and what I demonstrate in my life. Well, I'm not talking about in our mindset that we're doing certain things to, to try to make our way into heaven. We can't make our way into heaven. Come on, we're saved by faith. We're saved by faith because we believe God and with his, his work for us on the cross. That's how we're saved. It's grace. It's a gift of God. Come on. We've got to be established in that. See, it, it leads to major anxiety and challenges in people's lives when we're out of order, when he's not a priority. Come on. When I'm not giving, when I'm not living, 
Come on, when, when he's not first in our worship. Come on, worshiping everything else. I'm worshiping this person and that person and this thing and this event and this around my life. That car, this house. A lot of worship out there. But is God first? Come on, it's sad to pay a $700 a month car note and you haven't paid $70 in tithes in years. Come on, it's priority. Come on, we can exaggerate and talk about the word, but are we living it? Come on, have we set God first in our lives? We're not talking about being the first one here in church at 10, 10 o'clock when the service is on. No, I'm talking about in my life, every day. Not just the religious aspects of my service, but in the lifestyle of my habits. Come on, how do I serve God? Come on, and then we look around and see, I will be judged because I'm going to look around and say, why things ain't working out in my life? Well, it depends on you. Come on. It can't depend on everybody else because my salvation is personal. My walk with God is personal. Come on. And, and, and if, if it depends on me, I want to keep it strong. I want to keep it growing. I want to keep it vibrant. Come on. We do the same thing in our, our physical relationships with people. We want to do everything that we can to keep this relationship right. But yet we don't make God a priority. We say he is. We don't even think he is in our lives. But what is the demonstration? Is it really lining up? Oh, we got to seek you first the kingdom. And the promise is everything else will be added to us. Oh, I'm only healed today because of God. I'm only sane today because of God. And he knows I want to keep his kingdom first. It might hurt me personally. And let me tell you, everybody that loves me don't always agree with me. Don't mean they don't love me, they just don't agree with me. But until they learn for themselves and live for themselves to put the kingdom first, then there's still going to be things lacking. As much as I want them to be whole, as much as I want everything to work for them the way it should work, it's only going to work when it depends on them. It depends on them. So allow God to have his perfect way in us so that we can serve out this kingdom and serve him with gladness. I'm glad y'all tuned in today, but I'll be more excited when we all still tune in to God and his will for our lives. And today is just another opportunity. You may be watching, or you may be sending this out, or sitting with someone else and they don't know Jesus. Or maybe he's not a priority in your life, and everything else is. Come on, you pull the teeth and get to watch the video together. You pull the teeth to have service together and to do spiritual things together. You, you pull the teeth. And the reality is, is because the priority is not God. The priority is everything else working. Come on, have it. Going. All these other things become a priority and serving in the kingdom becomes less and less. Come on, I want to challenge you today. Set your affection on things above. And watch God start to align things in your life that you couldn't align. Help people that you couldn't help. Minister in ways you couldn't. Why? Because you put him first. And when you put him first, he puts your life in order. And whatever you hear by our Father, we bless and thank you. And maybe you're watching today. And you need to put God first in your life. Come on, allow him to be Lord of your life. He's your Savior. You've been seven minutes to your heart and, and you want him to die for you and he's already done that. But the reality is, are you dying for him? Have you sacrificed and given your life and surrendered your will? If you haven't done that, I need you to make this prayer your prayer. Say, dear Heavenly Father, forgive me where I've been wrong, where I've not surrendered my will, where I've lived after myself and been selfish and sinful. Forgive me my ways and the error of my ways that I might be accepted in this kingdom. And God, your promise is that as I give my will and confess my sins, that you're faithful to forgive me and to cleanse me. So God, I pray you do that and even more in Jesus' name.
Come on, if you made that prayer, you were praying and accepted the Lord. Not just as the Savior, but as the King and Lord of your life. And begin to live it out so that God is glorified and the enemy is horrified because now you've made a decision and God is honored in that decision. So God bless you. Pray that you get into the word of God and let it teach you, let it show you so that you're not conformed to the world like so many. They change for the world and everything about the world. But that same scripture or the same verse and chapter in Romans chapter 12 says, don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed. That means the change is coming. The way I think, the way I act, the way I feel, it changes because I'm a child of the God, child of the kingdom. So let's work together and serve this kingdom of God together as God begins to unify the church in every way and in every place so that we will be as one as the Father and the Son are one. So God bless you. I pray I, I, I see you on Wednesday night for Bible study. We'll be studying the Word of God together. And uh, I pray that you, God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.